Hello, it's Shadex, and welcome to the Animated Dudes Podcast. Now let's get animated! You got some energy today. Yeah. And it should be. Like, it's our one year anniversary. Woo! One year. That's crazy. We've been doing this for a year. My head hurts. (laughs) I'm I'm still nervous and scared. Ah, don't be. But anyway, so we have someone we haven't seen in a while. You want to introduce yourself again? Oh, sure, I can. Hi, I'm I'm Gummy. <gasps> Hello, how's it going? <gasps> you're back. It's been five thousand years. Yeah, it's actually back. been one year. <laughs> I can't believe a whole it. year of not being here. That that's weird. <laughs> We didn't. We didn't forget you. Yeah, not at all. It's just that you were busy with stuffs. I think with like college and that, you know, education. Mostly, mostly like school stuff, basically. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, understandable. Did, didn't you say you like uh, recently, like graduated or? Yes. Yes, that is true. I did do that. That is important. Nice. Two celebrations on education. Yeah. Thank you. That was, a, that was amazing. Yeah. So, all right. Well, where's our cake? Ah, uh, I didn't bake one. What? Oh. I didn't have time. I gotta go do stuff later today. Just an where's our cake with green these... icing and? Just, just if I was like gonna a... make a cake, I would make it look like Shade's Target shirt. <laughs> that sounds delicious. <laughs> so what is with the target shirts? I'm not sure. Like I just designed it one day and um it it just seemed to fit him too well. It's where you can throw stuff like wet sponges at him. It's... Um anyway, <laughs> uh shoot <laughs> Should we move on to uh, the topics for this month? Sure. Awesome. Let's start off strong. The Sonic movie got delayed. Oh. Yes, it did. We all knew it was going to happen, but like... Yeah, everyone... Like, nobody expected them to redesign and re-render an entire movie in seven months. Yeah, that was kind of weird that they actually like bothered to do that because with, with most situations like this, they just they just leave it until it comes out, and then they like, well, why are they complaining? But yeah, it's kind of weird that they're like, oh no, don't worry, we'll we'll change it. And that's like a mixed bag. Like on one hand, it's like, yay, we aren't gonna have to look at that ugly face for sixty minutes or more. But on the other hand, it's like, oh no, those artists probably aren't gonna get paid overtime, such as as Hollywood's deal. I hope they do, but yeah. sucks for them. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I don't blame the individual artists. I just blame the 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 people who actually were like, "Yep, no," nope, who approved that human Sonic design. Because I'm I'm sorry, I'm telling you, those fires scare me. Yeah, and, and it, it's it's all the worst because. They're probably not going to change anything about the writing, and the writing was probably one of the weakest points of that trailer next to the movie, uh, next to Sonic himself. Like, it's going to be a very, like, down to, like, no real skill, generic, Alvin and the Chipmunks type B-list movie that people are going to see because of Sonic. Mm Mm-hmm, yeah. Hmm. I've been hearing the term B-list movie a lot lately. Yeah. It's nothing Avengers level. And, like, not even Detective Pikachu level, which, like, the writing in that movie was, like, I expected something more, but, you know, it's way better than uh, what I would have expected. It exceeded my expectations uh, for that movie, but it didn't exceed my expectations in the levels of writing in general. Yeah, I've heard Detective Pikachu is okay. I did end it. Mm. 
Hey, at least it has Gangster's Paradise. <laughs> I hope it, if they redo that trailer with a new Sonic, I hope they keep Gangster's Paradise because that was just the perfect suck. Oh, and instead of Jim Carrey, it's like Julio as Eggman. Yeah, although people have been telling me that Jim Carrey is kind of an asshole. He is. Um, there's uh, there's a documentary about it when. Was I think it was about the when he was filming The Grinch or that. Um, oh, shit. Wasn't it that one uh, biography of him playing a comedian or improv? Oh, yeah, was, Andy Kaufman. Yeah, Andy yeah, Kaufman. Like Man, Man to the Moon or something. I don't know. It's, but yeah, it's just basically like he's very hard to work with. Hmm. This movie spells like there's very weak st- uh, supports for this movie all around. Oh yeah, like it's really just I don't. It's just weird. They're like, oh yep, Sonic 06. Yeah, that that was good. Let's just try and recreate that a little bit. Like <laughs> at least it's not at least it's not Holmes and Watson. <laughs> Roblox sound dot jpeg. Um, did that come out in January? Uh, I don't know. Because there's pretty much the fuck you. It's January mode to be for like, yeah, dump it. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah, it's I haven't. I I, I I I haven't seen Holmes and Watson, but um, I was hoping it'd be good because it's Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, and I really like Step Brothers. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, but yeah, new Will Ferrell movies haven't been good. Yeah, I mean, you heard, isn't he um that marshmallow guy? Do any of you? Know, okay, is this pop? star guy who has like I don't know he's trying to do like a Daft Punk kind of thing oh Marshmallow that guy with yeah. the X's in his eyes and he's wearing or, or I think, are you talking about like uh, well, Dead Mouse uh, oh, that, yeah, yeah like he's wearing a big head and I don't think anybody's yeah. seen his face well there was a video where he was like I'm finally going to reveal my face and he lifts up the helmet and it's Will Ferrell <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> 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 all right you never know well it was kind of like when house of basic was like i'm gonna have a face reveal and it was like hey if you saw us michael here yeah that whole that ordeal was just a, like amazing yeah um but in uh other movie news uh batwoman oh wait no this isn't really a movie it's a series isn't it yeah <laughs> batwoman i got a series trailer and people are Either have mixed opinions that pit. I don't know. Uh, somebody bring me up to speed. Me and audience. Um. Well, they released the Batwoman trailer, and it's just her story, I guess. And people didn't like it. I don't know what else to say. But hold on, Gummy. Do Do you know she's a woman? She She is yeah. a woman. So So you know. Um, they made that perfectly clear throughout the whole trailer. Uh, they make oh. a, they make a comment about Batman's costume. Um, they did that whole thing where when Captain Marvel in the trailer, where it was like instead of hero, they mm-hmm. cross out the O, and it's like her. Um, the song literally just screams like "I'm a woman," but over and over. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, that's like that's a what bit right. She's like, she says something like, uh, I don't know. Um, no, it was like, this, no, this, no, this no, woman finish a man's job or something. I'm like, bitch, you broke into your cousin's, your rich cousin's cave and stole his costume. You ain't shit. Yeah, and she <laughs> said, she said, this suit will be better once it fits a woman. But I'm like, bitch, make your own goddamn suit. Spider Man made his own suit. Yeah. Um, she, she, okay. Can, sorry, slight tangent. Um, well, kind of. When in the Elseworlds crossover, when they had, uh, when they introduced Batwoman, I was actually kind of excited because I love this character. She's amazing. Um, the moment I saw Ruby Rose walk into the Batcave, she, I was like, oh, okay, no, maybe no, because she acts like a, a stroppy teenager. 
like a punk teenager. Like, okay, picture it as like Bruce Wayne walking into the Batcave for the first time and like the bats fly around him. He's like, he's kind of straight, dead to the point, almost a little bit robotic. She walks in, she's got her fists clenched for some reason. And she like fake anger by like lowering her head slightly. It's just like so cheesy and oh. thank you, CW. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, isn't it by the same people who did Supergirl, which is like was a CBS show? Because I know people don't like Supergirl compared to The Flash or um, Arrow. Yeah, I do kind of exist in that whole same universe, to be honest. I mean, Supergirl's fine. I just see a lot of people complaining about it all the time. They're like, this is fine. Yeah, because I know originally it was different universes, but then they like introduced the multiverse, so Supergirl a... and um, Batwoman oh, yeah. can exist with the Flash and Arrow. So it's like a multiverse. Oh, and um, oh, spoilers, I guess, for Elseworld, um, it's implied that Earth 90 of the 90s Flash is, they're all dead except for him, like his whole family so if if anyone grew up watching the 90s Flash I'm sorry, your childhood has been destroyed Uh. because all of, all his family members uh, villains like Mark Hamill playing the trickster they're all dead Uh. Uh, thanks DC well, it's like when um, it's like when um, Spider-Man and his amazing friends died in Spider-Verse, but I think Dan Slott got the universe wrong. <clears throat> oh yeah, he. I, I don't know if he, if he like intentionally or just like mistakenly. I think hopefully he like mistakenly because it'd be kind of funnier. Apparently, instead of like the actual like universe for his amazing friends, it was like their comic spin-off that he killed off by accident. Um, but there is a video somewhere on the internet of uh, the voice actor Spidey from on that show reacting to the, like, this one panel of like um, uh, Spider-Man, Firestar, and Iceman like dead, and he's just like, "What? What? What? Where did this come from? They can't kill Spider-Man." Uh. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, a Batwoman, yep, she has a stupid wig. Um, She's a woman. That's not why I hate it. I hate it because it's bad. Um, It it looks crappy. People didn't realize, like, like Ghostbusters trailer did this too. Like, Ghostbusters 2016 did this too. Like, people don't want to see a movie because it boasts a feminist message. People want to see a movie because it has a good story. Yeah, and like... Yeah. You're also alienating. Like, see, if I was trying to sell a product, I would want, no matter what, because I like money, I would want everyone to buy it. Just go into like a niche demographic or like just any demographic. It's like, it's kind of stupid in a way. Oh, oh no, Drake. <laughs> Drake, no. That woman got you. Oh no. Yep. Yeah. We had technical difficulties for a second. Um, don't worry, we're back now. Yeah, I was just saying, like, cool. it's just weird. That, like, it was like that one Crunchyroll anime, High Guardian Spice or whatever it's called, um, where they were just like, yep. yeah, it's actually made by women. And they're like, I don't blame the women. I just blame the like, the idiots who actually put the trailer together. Yeah, yeah like the show. Like... Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can go. <laughs> It's like, yeah, okay, that women made it. That's great. How's the actual show? Because yeah. I don't really, like, it doesn't matter who's making it. As long as the final product is quality, then that's cool. Yeah, and it's like, okay, so, and they also implied that only women can work there. So I'm like, okay, so I'm a guy, can I work there? Or, like, if, like, I knew someone who was... A who who was a woman and is now a man, like the transgender, is like, are they allowed to enter, or is it, or are they just like, nah, you're not, you're not a woman. So it's kind of, I don't know. 
Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. What I wish, what I wish they did was like promote. T- <clears throat> wait till they had finished animation first and promoted the show, and then they could say, "Oh, and also women were worked on it." And that could be a like it'd be in a separate accolades trailer or behind the scenes or something. Yeah, yeah. Or or they like could... at least alongside the trailer for the actual show. Yeah, sure, yeah. maybe yeah. after like... that there could be a behind the scenes, or they could like sell this show first and say, "Oh, here's a bonus: women worked on it." It's kind of like when Seth MacFarlane was making that uh, Flintstones reboot, and he was just like, yeah, I'm going to make a cartoon. It's going to be great. I have no footage. I haven't done anything of it, but it's coming out. Just and people me. just, he was expecting people to have faith in it just because Seth, Beh- Seth MacFarlane was behind it. I, like, I don't, he said something like, it'll be on the same level as like 90 Simpsons, but I'm like, you made Family Guy and like the Cleveland show. I don't think... <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's going to turn out as well as he expected it to be. Um, oh. mm. yeah. Anyway, so anyway uh, Batwoman. In more, fa- <laughs> <laughs> in more positive news, Cartoon Network's getting not one, but two new shows uh, oh. that have been greenlit. Uh, first off, Mau Mau, the Adventures, or the Protectors of something or other, and Tig and Seek. That one pilot that was really weird that was on Cartoon Network's YouTube channel for the longest time. Yeah, Mau Mau, I haven't seen the pilot for. But I've seen clips. It looks like it's both a comedy and an action show, and the animation's pretty cool, the art style. I do like that they're focusing more on the action, and the hero isn't just a goofy ass that uh, cares more about the adventure than his friends. He has his priorities straight. And the world mm. around it is a bit silly, so that's a, that's a good uh, contrast. I like that's different from the norm. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, um, Take and seek, however, is just an acid trip. Yeah, I, was, I, haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Oh yeah, Take and um, seek. I saw the I saw the the um, the short, and there's like a character from Arms basically in it. Like similar to arms. <laughs> <laughs> she just has like she's a. I'm not sure if she's a mainstay character though. Yeah, she isn't. She was just she's just like a one-off character, I think. But like Tig yeah. and Seek, it's about a hide and seek agency, and I think that that premise or like, lost and found. Yeah, lost. Oh yeah, lost and found. I got confused by the title. But um, lost and found agency. I don't know that 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 concept if executed well has potential yeah i'm not sure what kind of stories they could tell with tig and seek um but i'm genuinely curious to find out what they do with it yeah i've got a question um yeah. i've so what about only Apple and seen clips of I forgot about that show hmm. Apple and only seen and clips of oh. oh sorry sorry uh, <laughs> sorry you cut off i was just gonna yeah. say i it's, it's all good, but I was just going to say, I've seen, like, clips of Mau Mau and whatnot on Cartoon Network itself. Yeah. Because, like, they did with Victor and Valentino, there was just, like, those, like, new show coming to Cartoon Network clips. And I liked what I saw. I thought it was all right. I haven't seen anything on Tig and Seek, though. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I haven't seen anything of the actual show itself, but the pilot, which was called uh, Tiggy Winks... Um, is up on their YouTube channel um, to give you a general idea of what it is. And people, the comments back then were saying, like, this is a better Uncle Grandpa, which to, I'm thinking, all right, that's one way to sell the show to people, but I'm not sure that if that's a really accurate description. Yeah, Uncle um, Grandpa got better, like, as the show went on. Yeah. Um... But it seems like Tig and Seek is going to be a bit more grounded in reality with some wacky hijinks ensuing later. Kind of like a mix of Uncle Grandpa and regular show yeah. with a bit more emphasis on the Uncle Grandpa. Hmm. Yeah, um, a quick question. Uh, what happened with Apple and Onion? Uh, I think that's still in production. Um, but still in pro- oh, wow. I think. Yeah, um, the, the last crea- I heard of it. Yeah, go ahead. The creator, I think, said. Let me let me check. I think the creator Isn't said it? they're still working on it. 
Or that there's Isn't more episodes. Main guy voiced by Richard Iosi? The guy uh, from the IT crowd. Maybe. The guy who I apparently sound like. Because, <laughs> I don't know, I'm, we're both geeks, I guess, and British. Okay, <laughs> apparently in fall 2019, this got, rele- this got announced on the 20th. Yeah, second season. Oh, okay. Nice, nice. <clears throat> yeah. Also, can I just say, Rich Iote, um, wh- what the fuck were you doing with that one show? Beauty and the Geek. That that sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like you, but that show is terrible. <laughs> Seriously, it's the most... If you want to cringe for like half an hour, I recommend looking it up on YouTube, Beauty and the Geek. I don't think I've heard of that one, but all right. Essentially, it's just like think um, think of a cartoon like those rich girls from like a cartoon mixed with like stereotypical nerds, and they're like, "Hey, we're gonna put them in a room together," and they're like, nah, "I'm so quirky," and they're just like, "Oh man, like, like oh god, these nerds," and like, "Yeah, you're very beautiful." <laughs> That's, uh, okay. Um, and he's like narrating throughout the whole um, thing like it's some high art. Ugh. Sorry, Gummy, yeah? <laughs> uh, it's all good. Uh, I was just going to say, speaking of shows, I mean, uh, I know you guys had like another topic that you guys going to move on to or whatever, or whatever. But before we get off the topic of, of shows, Watchmen is getting an HBO series. That's fun. Oh, really? That's really cool. Oh yeah, Watchmen. Yeah, and it's, it's like a ten, it's a several years later. From, like it's like Watchmen in twenty nineteen or twenty twenty. Yeah, Saturday morning Watchmen. Like years after the like comic, modern day. Like it's it's in real time. Like after the comic came out. Hmm. Hmm. I'm currently reading the Doomsday Clock series. I like that a lot. Yeah, they're not. I don't know if I don't know if they're gonna. I don't know if they're gonna adapt that, but maybe maybe they'll take some ideas from it. I don't know. Oh, is that any good? Be meaning to read that. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Hmm. Right. Nice. right, with new shows coming. The next issue should be out. Actually, I need to see that. Hmm. Cool. Well. When some shows come, some shows end. And that's the next topic. Mighty Magiswords. Um, it it went for a while, but um, the show ended production. Uh, when was it? This summer? Last summer? Mm. Um, it's uh, They're airing their final episodes on both the app and the uh, channel itself. Mm. And what, what I really don't like is like all of the storyboard artists and Kyle himself uh, well I think he got a new job but all the storyboard artists I've seen now have looking for job in their Twitter in their Twitter usernames and that's really concerning because like a lot of the Cartoon Network staff usually go jump from one project to another internally like Rebecca Sugar she jumped from uh, Adventure Time to her own show uh, Ian Jones Cordy Adventure Time Steven Uni- to Steven Universe to OKKO OK like, but these guys, they just did Mighty Magiswords and then kind of fell off. Hmm. It's kind of really concerning. I, yeah, does, I, I agree. Does them, does them not being able to find work within the, the studio have to do well, with anything like the show's performance or anything like that? I, I don't, don't really. think so. Um, I, I think it's just because they... I got Galeem! Oh my god. What? What? Hello. That, that's Shade's brother, I guess. Oh. Um, Fortnite bucks. No. Um, I feel like working for Casting Network at this point is kind of like working for the newspaper. Because like, it's kind of a dying thing. So like, they're talking about like a, an app or something. Or they might have it. I don't know. But the thing is, I don't, get, I don't have it. I don't have a Boomerang app. I don't have any app. It's only you. It's only in the U.S. Unlike and even before. then, the, the U.S. Cartoon Network app sucks. The interface is yeah. terrible, and, and like, like 
Yeah, they're writing all of this based on an app. Where it's like, just make a fucking website. Or, uh, you no, know, they do have a website. Just make it into a streaming site. All right, I'll... But it's like, I think that's why you got you had people like uh, Craig McCrack who kind of jump ship to Netflix and Alex Hirsch because they're like, eh, it's the way of the future. Yeah. Like, things like HBO, who recently ended Game of Thrones, hmm. people are saying, yeah, HBO's dead. Nobody, ha- HBO doesn't have anything else to watch. So they do what they always do. Buy an HBO subscription, watch all of Game of Thrones, and then cancel their subscription. <laughs> Isn't that, do people do that with, like, stuff like well, they deal with a lot of uh, uh, streaming services that don't have a, hmm. anything to watch outside of one show. I just think it's a real pain in the ass. Like, every like, network's like, oh, I'm going to make a streaming service. And I'm like, yeah, but I, I pay for Netflix. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, guy. <laughs> what the heck is that? That's the thing from Ed and Eddie. <laughs> What the fuck? Is that like a phone or something? Yes, that was my phone. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> I forgot I did that. I forgot I made that my text tone. <laughs> Is that you? That's, that's great. Ed, Eddie's picking us up in his van. <laughs> oh, was it? Oh, yeah, streaming services. Too many. I, I don't get... I get paid enough, but I'm just like, uh, like I want to, like I want to, I want to support Doom Patrol, but like, I don't know, I don't want to pay for a streaming service that's just DC. Well, yeah, I'm gonna go pay for it right now. I, oh, wait, because it's US exclusive. Thanks. I think it'll be on Netflix, so I think Netflix gets the DC shows in the UK because Titans is on Netflix in the UK. I think. Hmm. hmm. I like, I uh, pay for that DC streaming app whenever I get the money. Does it also know. like in, uh like include like comics and that? Yeah, yeah, it does. So okay. So I don't know. Um, I, I think they're just gonna do. They either put it on Netflix or bring the streaming service to the UK. I don't. I don't know what they're gonna do. Because Marvel kind of has something like that called Marvel Unlimited. Yeah. Um. And kind of say it's a real pain in the ass to navigate through. It took me, it took me a while to just. I brought a physical comic, uh, Mag- Magnificent Miss Marvel issue one, and there's a re- like a redeem code in the back. I was like, yeah, I might as well just m- move it to digital so I can read it on the go. No, it is it took me ages to bloody do it, and like took another like five minutes just to like download it. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, sorry, that's that's a nerdy thing. I don't... <laughs> We're all nerds here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, next bit of news: uh, Gendy Tartakovsky uh, has a new show premiering called Primal. <gasps> oh. <gasps> yeah, has anybody seen the trailers to Primal? Yeah, yeah, I have. I, I, have. Uh, I, I have high have hopes for this. Um, I. I need to. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if it's going to be like dialogue driven or anything, but um, it seems like it's some sort of like. If I got it correct, it's like some sort of silent, uh, sound effect only kind of thing where it's hmm. this primitive man uh, going around doing his caveman thing or something. It kind of. Sounds like it's a mix between Samurai Jack and Korgoth of Barbaria. I know that. Oh yeah, I know that Samurai Jack had episodes without with like very little dialogue before, so I wouldn't have a problem with like a show without like dialogue. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and I saw a movie like without dialogue that I want to mention. Um, the is it the Red Turtle? It's just a really weird movie. Hmm. No, I, mean, I don't know. I do adore the art style, though. Oh, it's yeah. like something that I would not imagine would be easy to make move, but they're going for it. 
Um, also, I think I saw a thing on Twitter where they were like, someone said, uh, Gendy's using uh, past character design from Dexter, and it was like a caveman. And oh, like, yeah. Suspiciously like the one from Primal. <laughs> Yeah, I, the art style is similar to Symbionic Titan, and like it's it's not like the Samurai Jack art style. It's it's different. Hmm. Like more cartoony, okay. kind of realistic. I don't, I don't know how to describe it exactly. It, uh, yeah. Because he tried to do something like that with Adult Swim, Korg off of Barbaria, if you've seen that. Yeah, that too. But well, it was, um, they didn't make it because it's just too expensive. Yeah, um, Jendi directed it, but I think Aaron Springer wrote it. Yeah, did he work on SpongeBob? Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know, I, I, I love that. It was a nice tribute to, like, Conan, like Conan the Barbarian, the film from the 70s. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. Adult, as Adult Swim said on their website, you could only handle one anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at the topics list. Am I saying this right? The next topic is Minions, Rise of the Guru Tika Witty Bubbles. Shade, why? What? No, it's... You... it's, it's, it's I have it... Rise of... Room. Yeah. Did it's you probably just take it? Rise of Gru? <laughs> it's Rise of Gru. It's. I don't oh, know. that's a different topic. Uh, you you spaced these very poorly. I don't know. For for me, it's different. I don't know. I I guess it transfers differently. Wait, Michael Jackson's monk. He was supposed to get a film. Yeah, directed by. Yeah, we'll go, we'll get to that. Holy crap. Alright, yeah. But yeah, there's oh, um, there's gonna be another Minions movie. And it's gonna oh. be a prequel focusing on Gru as a kid. Yeah. Well Technic it's just a sequel to the prequel. Yeah, yeah, it is. Because we already have one prequel. Yeah. Which is probably what the first one should have maybe focused on. I, I don't know. Yeah, like the minion, like they established that. All right, there's broken continuity all over the place because apparently, like in the according to the first movie, Gru made the minions because there were blueprints on in the background. But mm -hmm. according to the minions movie, they've been there all along in like this evolutionary whatever. Yeah, that's a good point. And they met Gru. And thirdly. The minions are supposed to be evil by nature. They serve evil people. So mm. why is it that, that they had an instinct to do good in the movie? Fucking Steve Carell. <laughs> it's your fault. Yeah, and... Uh, oh, yeah, and they did establish, like, purple minions could be created. So, I mean... Are they, I feel like they just ripped that off of the Smurfs. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Yeah, because that was a thing of the Smurfs in like the comics, and I think there was a there was an episode about it where it was basically zombies, where mm. they would turn purple. Yep. Goddamn minions. <laughs> <clears throat> that is mm. like, it's just all over the place, and just really, it goes nowhere. Oh yeah, so. I was just why? Illumination, why? Yeah, they're doing why, that. Mm -hmm. Oh, um... <clears throat> also, uh, rest in peace, Chris Riccardi, uh, Tim Conway, and Peter Mayhew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of people. Like, in just like a short like, span of time. Yeah. I know. I, I, think, think, yeah, I think um, the, the thing about Tim Conway kind of got to me because I, I grew up watching Spongebob a, a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, watching the old Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy episodes were like really like, they were, they were really funny. Yeah, they were. Yeah. And I'm not sure if it was real, but um, the Nickelodeon Twitter 
Um, did you guys see this? Like they they tweeted out once upon a time there was an ugly barnacle. He was so ugly, everyone died, and everybody was like, "What the hell?" That's kind of been really, really poor taste. I think that was their tweet before they found out Tim Conway passed away. Okay, I'm not sure that. how they weren't the first to find out. That's like a really big name to them. Oh yeah, for sure. It was just that was really bad timing. Oh yeah, then there was the F is for everyone. Oof, no yeah. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me, and then it was N is for, and then it was blank. I, I don't know who messed up on Twitter. Where Nickelodeon or that one time YouTube said Happy Fourth of July and tweeted what they thought was like an American flag emoji. But someone responded with, "That's not even the that's not even the real American flag." I don't know. What did they it's... tweet the flag of Texas? Something like that. But if you try to go back to their tweet, they felt bad and deleted it. <laughs> that's <laughs> terrible. Some unpaid intern really messed up that day. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, what are the other topics? We didn't even talk about minions, but whatever. That's not a topic that needs to be talked about. Um, yeah, I mean, who cares about the minions? Michael Jackson monkey movie, or whatever. That got canceled. Shade, you know most about this. All right, uh, I'm going. I'm okay. Okay, here, here we go. Yeah, Netflix. Okay, Taika Waititi. He, he um, pulled out of the film, and so did Netflix. It was going to be animated by Starburns, Indu Starburns Industries, the, the company that um, did, uh, that did um, uh, Moral Oral and, uh, and Frankenhole in the film Anomalisa. Hmm. In the re oh, okay. Uh, this film would have... And he said that... Uh, Taika Waititi said, um, this film is not about Michael Jackson because that's not the story for me to tell or a story I'd be comfortable telling. He said, um, it's about a chimpanzee's fascinating journey through the complex jungle of human life. He said that in 2017. Okay. But why they... Did they not realize that Michael Jackson is not the best thing to talk about recently? Yeah, that's why they, I think that's why it got canceled. Oh, it's got. Oh, sorry. I thought they were still making it. That was cancelled. Okay. Yeah. Why it, f that doesn't make sense. Like, Michael Jackson's been dead since 2009. Like, like all oh, ten years later, we got to make a film about him. Oh, wait, he's dead. Um. Oh, he still has a monkey. But what is the thought process behind these movies? I don't know. It would have been interesting to see Taika Waititi's take on it. Like, I don't know, but... But instead, he's doing an Akira movie, but with Asian actors. So, Wait, did you just say Akira? It's Akira. Instead of Akira? Akira. Akira. I, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't know if it's pronouncing it. Yeah, Akira. Alright. Oh, wait. Okay, he's... Making an Akira film. Wait, wait, is it live action? Yeah, it's live action. He's going to do probably more than one because he's basing it off the manga, which has multiple volumes mm -hmm. instead of the instead of the uh, the, um, the movie, which anime? adapted all the, the anime, which adapted all the all the volumes into one film. So, like, he'll be able to tell a longer story. Mm hmm. So, it's not going to turn out like Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, like the remake. It won't. He yeah, like made he made sure he made reason. sure to have Asian American actors. So it, it'll, I think it'll be in English. That's a lot of problem. That's a lot that uh, uh, other problems when adapting an anime. A lot of them are made in Japan by Japanese people for Japanese people. Yeah, it makes like, not. They don't really have America on the mind when uh, making these. I mean, the movie's about the is very Japanese. It's about like based on the atomic bomb. Like, Wait, Godzilla. 
Yeah, it's similar to Godzilla. I gotta go, y'all. See y'all mm-hmm. later. Oh, See wait, you. Bye. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming Sorry. on. Sorry. Bye-bye. That's okay. Bye. It's all right. One angel. Yeah. We never yeah, got um, to talk about the high school stories, but whatever. Well, I just... You were, sorry, you were saying about Godzilla. Um, I think it was Brad Jones who made a video, like, today, I think, why he why he released it today, um, where he was reviewing the edited version of Godzilla, because at the time, um, the Japanese version of Godzilla, it was very, like, it was kind of a serious film, well, as serious as it could be, um, about portraying, like, the effects of, like, the like atomic like the atomic bomb and that yeah um like there's there's different bits of imagery like godzilla's head is supposed to represent the mushroom cloud um his like scaly back is supposed to represent like the like scars and all of that of like uh people from around that time like on their backs and that and it's um but that was um there was one scene in it where they had there was like this woman and with a kid and it's very like a somber like quiet scene but it's like there's like you just hear fire crackling and she's like giving a beautiful speech about like she'll join her she'll join her husband soon because implying that her husband's dead mm. well in the american version they add like this like really like shittily like jazz music over it and they don't even subtitle the poor lady, so I'm sure a lot of people back then were like, "What? What? What was she, what was she saying?" I don't know. It's just that the film, the American version, is a mess. They added um, <clears throat> the actor Raymond Burr as like a guy who's like, "Oh, I'm going over to to Japan to report on this," and literally spell out the whole film. He's like, "Yeah, so Godzilla is stomping around on this, and he's doing this. I can't believe it." Uh, God, I hate Wasn't that. it like guys like they edited in American versions like look it's Godzilla something like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean if you if you want to watch Godzilla from like the original version, uh don't watch the Raymond Burr version. I mean if that's the only one that you can get, go for it I guess, but it's kinda shit. That's go one of the that. earliest uh, versions yeah. of American bastardiza- bastardization. Oh for sure. Go to um Go, go for the Criterion Collection version. That's the probably the most perfect, uh, perfect one you can buy. Yeah. Um. So we were gonna talk about conventions, but have any of us been to a convention recently? I I went to one and uh, I got lost from my friend uh, Nolan, who goes by Painkiller Studios. Like, I, I don't know. I had an okay time at the convention. I uh, got to meet uh, Nick Spencer, the current writer for Spider-Man, and I met uh, the creator of Thanos, Jim Starlin. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Mm-hmm. What an f- iconic picture. Then I got to finish, I finished the convention by uh, going to a CW-verse panel. Where I well Arrowverse and I saw um, a panel of John Wesley Ship and Daniel Panabaker. John Wesley Ship, he's the '90s Flash, and he also mm. played uh, Jay Garrick and um, Henry Allen, who's Barry's dad. And he also played the Flash again. Yeah, which I got excited for. Yeah, he talked. I love that he, series. He talked. He talked about returning as the Flash. I I love that series, the '90s Flash. Shame they're all dead, but you know, I just try to forget that aspect. <laughs> uh, Mark, oh Mark Hamill is a really good trickster, by the way, really funny. Yeah, the, he returned. Uh, oh yeah, he exists in the Flash CW. There's like different versions of the trickster. Oh, okay. Yeah, there was there's the there was one in the Flash CW universe and one in Jay Garrick's universe who's like very similar to the Joker. Hmm. Oh, wait, what about the Riddler? Shh, I know, right? Nah, shh, shh. What Riddler? <laughs> I need to play Lego Batman again. Anyway, um... <laughs> <laughs> Which one? One, two, or three? I... How many are there? 
Uh, Wasn't there um, like a Lego it, Batman movie that was just cutscenes from a game? I don't know. Batman 3 is called Beyond Gotham, and it's like. Batman. They only did that just because, like, namesake, but it's actually just more Lego Green. Hmm. Oh, right. Um, uh, while we're talking about superhero and comic book news, um, I heard that um, Disney is trying to involve Deadpool in the in the MCU. I don't. I think I read that that was false, and that but that um, Sony really wants Venom in a in a Spider Man film. I mean, that I mean could, that's not hard to do, but I would love to see Deadpool on a Disney show, trying so hard not to swear. I, I think they are trying to get Deadpool in the MCU, but one rumor was that he was going to be in Spider Man Three, the third hmm. Spider Man, like the sequel to Far From Home. Yeah, I read about that. Yeah, and not just yeah. any Deadpool. Not not like that one, uh, like the Ryan Reynolds Deadpool, the one we all know and uh, love. I <laughs> apparently like Reynolds had a lot of fun doing Deadpool, and like hearing him, seeing him on like a Disney program, it would just be so jarring. And I'm like, okay, Reynolds, I know you're good for it. Please swear in front of all the children would, would they let deadpool have the one f word till to pure pg-13 movie I, I don't know like oh so I, it's gonna be like um is it gonna be like when uh tony stark says like the first word of age of ultron he says shit and steve is like language yeah, like, I know that uh, Box, like, each X-Men movie, starting with First Class, I think, yeah, first starting with First Class, they all, all had the one F-word pure movie. Like, lo- like um, Wolverine, he said, like, he told, uh, he told um, Xavier Magneto to F off. Then there was um, that time, then, uh, oh, no, he told them to go F themselves. He said that. <laughs> I do remember, I can't remember if it was a fan comic or an actual thing, but Deadpool was talking to all of the uh, X-Men. It's like, okay, guys, we're in a PG-13 movie. That means we can only say the F word once. And uh, Wolverine just walks in going, what the F are you talking about? And he goes, no! (laughs) Just screaming to the sky. (laughs) And he really wanted to say it, I guess. It was the funniest thing ever to me. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't know if Dis- Disney has not done that. Like, I watched Iron Fist, and, like, it's TVMA, you know, they could say the F word if they wanted to, but no, um, Claire Temple's just like, what the F? She just says, she doesn't say the F word. She just says, what the F? You need to get your effing shit together. Maybe, um, it's kind of a stretch, but I've just been thinking of how Disney will, like, go forward with this. Maybe, do you guys know what Touchstone Pictures is? Yeah. Maybe they could go with that, because, well, I don't really know too many Touchstone films, but one, have you heard of a film called Edward? It was a Tim Burton film. Yeah. There's swearing in that, and that was, uh, because of that, they um, had to release under Touchstone Pictures. Oh, same with Nightmare Before Christmas. So maybe Deadpool could go under that? question mark oh i know they still they own fox they could release fox movies as r-rated like they're releasing a kingsman film yeah because i think be hard it must be like kind of like not hard because they get paid a lot but it must be kind of like puzzling if you're like one of those like higher ups at disney like all right shit no matter what they do they'll be mad at us (sighs) yeah no idea what I'm, I'm actually just kind of hyped about that they put all episodes of The Simpsons on the Disney Plus thing. Almost all of them, except for the Michael Jackson what? one. Oh, and um, what if they just pussy that one? Like, okay, every single episode stars has a poo in it, we'll just remove. I'm He's like, just disappeared, like there's an empty desk at the quick part. Like, 
No, they just like every mention of him. Like if they even mention him, they just remove the episode. So there's like five <laughs> left. <laughs> yeah, I, it's weird how The well, Simpsons, like which has some TV fourteen episodes, is on the service, but not Fam. Well, Family Guy's a lot worse, but like. So I mean, I get why that's on Hulu. Hmm. 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 I just realised, I just went to the chat, um, to the Twitch, and our little characters are blinking. Yeah, uh, I did that. Touch. Thank you. Quick question, did your, your microphone is floating, that implied your microphone died. Oh yeah. Oh, did you drop it? <laughs> I just yanked it spirit out. Oh, just in peace. Also, that picture of me is very accurate. <laughs> Just holding the soda, mic yeah. taped to the top of the monitor. You, you should have drawn like, one of those like, really like crappy boxy monitors from like the nineties. That's oh, what that sorry. is. Oh, is it? Sorry. <laughs> oh, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make my Matrix fan film now. <laughs> so I think. Is that all the topics? We didn't really plan anything. Well, we uh, still have questions. Yeah, so... Did, actually, didn't people ask questions? Oh, no. Well, yeah, that was for the last podcast. All right. I yeah. can do an ad here. Let me... Um, right, we... Uh, now is the section where we take questions. If you have a question... Um, we all, uh, we're always taking questions from our Discord server, which is linked in the YouTube description, and also when we're live on Twitch. Mm. So yeah, uh, ask us stuff. I'm really sorry. Oh, wait. Okay, yeah, you guys don't have smell of vision so that's okay. <laughs> I don't think smell of vision has been a wide accepted technology yet. <laughs> um, I, remember that. Be, I remember that. I remember that. supposed to dress for... up all smartly. I remember, and, um, for, I remember for DeviantArt's... Fresh smells of garlic. I remember for DeviantArt's, like, April Fool's they did, you can smell a deviation. Yeah, you had to... <laughs> there, there was a supposed device you could buy. Um, uh, imagine if you could smell deviations. That'd be terrible. That, yeah, it would be terrible. Like, like if you find some weird art... <laughs> Some weird, disturbing art. Please don't. Um. All right, there was there well technically there was smell of vision like those scratch and sniff cards you went for with uh that went with movies. Or and I can't remember because I, I was like really young when it happened, but I was watching TV and there was uh. uh uh, the Spongebob episode, and every so often there was uh, a, an icon that came up in, like, the lower left corner of the screen. It was either... It was, like, a number followed by a little picture of, like, maybe a foot or an ice cream cone or something. And apparently you could get these scratch and sniff cards, and w while you watch Nickelodeon, there were certain episodes of Spongebob or whatever that would come up. You'd scratch and sniff along with the episode. Really? Yeah. So, so it was like Spy Kids 4 kind of thing. Yeah, yeah Spy Kids 4D. Where the 4D was because it's 3D and has a scratch and sniff <clears throat> card. That's 4D. Yeah, that's that totally 4D. Not like the ride where it's like it shakes and stuff. Oh yeah, I, I saw 4D movie. I think I talked about this on the theme park episode, but um, like it was at this Lego Discovery Center in uh, Chicago, and like their 4D movie was like, "Hey, it's a 3D movie, and bubbles come out of the ceiling." <laughs> like it was just it was just basically dish dish soap, and it like fall it falls from the ceiling on top of you. Hmm. I got I got a scary falls. Mm. Uh, scratch and sniff, but for porn. Oh no! I think uh, there was a scratch and sniff for an adult film. Uh, I can't remember what it was, but I don't want to remember. 
I think my brain is suppressing it for a reason. Um, but ooh, oh, we have a question. Uh, Veridius Joe asks, uh, "What is Shade's favorite form of bread?" This is very important, apparently. Form of bread. Uh, I like uh, white bread, whole grain bread. You don't think this oh. has anything to do with that guy on DeviantArt? No, no. I like um, French bread, garlic bread. Not No, nothing to do with Merlogic one. <laughs> that guy is weird. So yeah, I fear bread. the day when I get contacted. What kind of bread do you eat? Um, the white or brown? Oh. Uh, well, I don't really... I like bread, but I usually get my grain in the form of tortillas. Okay. Flour tortillas, to be specific. Like, corn tortillas are only eaten in specific instances, like... Uh, like fajitas or and other things. Flour tortillas are so good. You can eat them by themselves, which I do a lot. And it's just the perfect snack for me. Nice. I, I just tend to eat rice cakes. So. Mm. I haven't had a rice cake in a while. I really want one. Oh, that and um, that ham? Like just ham itself, no cheese just or mayonnaise. And just I, I just go to the fridge sometimes and just take a slice of ham. Mm. I haven't had a peanut butter sandwich in a while. Well, that's kind of the reason why I can't wear pink shirts anymore. Because if I do, I just look like a big slice of ham. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh. So, yeah. what kind of coats? Uh, what kind of coating do I like? Like honey glazed or? Oh, oh, we have another question <laughs> uh, from from our Twitch chat. Uh, Zilu Zion, I'm sorry if I mispronounced oh that. Uh, what I inspired that your avatars? Yeah. Well, I designed most of those. Um, Domino didn't really tell me what his avatar looked like, and <laughs> his screen name was Domino, so I just drew the appropriate. Oh, yeah, and I told Drake, like, just draw me with brown hair, so he drew me, like, super short. Yeah, I, you didn't tell me, so I, I drew something that matched your voice. Yeah. Which, I feel like I, if you haven't met in real life, Shane, you'd be a lot taller than me. Yeah, I would. I'm pretty yeah. tall. And I'm just kind of there, like a ghost or something, so I just drew myself as a ghost. I used to have color, and I got lazy, and I decided, you know what? People barely notice me. I'm just kind of floating around the internet, kind of like a ghost. So I'm a ghost. Yeah. And I've kept that motif. And Alex, if she was here, she's uh, did she send me? A, yeah, I used her Twitter profile as a base, but I also made her really short because she sounded like a small child. Yeah. Which she found it very funny. <laughs> Oh, what about Alex's avatar? Uh, wait, what? She's, uh, wait, sorry, I, I can't tell. So I thought you were still talking about the avatars. Yeah. She's pretending to be a plane. <laughs> yes, very much so. Oh, she always has her tongue sticking out, which, um, I like to draw. It's very funny. Hmm. Very, like, cartoony and goofy. Yes. Oh, for the, the two people that are watching this... Uh, if you don't know, Alex is a friend of mine. Uh, she is a small bambino, but she is very busy. Yes. With family, I think she said. Yeah, oh, we're recording, recording this. Memorial Day. Yeah, recording this yeah. on Memorial Day. Yeah, people had family stuff to do. Well, I, I wanted to record on the twenty seventh because that's when this the just that Google that Google Hangout stream happened. Hmm. That's that's oh, yeah. episode zero of the podcast. One whole year, damn. Yep, it's been a, a wild ride, and we're not stopping anytime soon. I don't think. Yeah. I was drinking then. I'm drinking now. Up top. <laughs> <laughs> a high five to myself. High five, gamers. <laughs> <laughs> 
Did I hit too hard? <laughs> yeah, it gave us right something. Gamers <laughs> I keep saying that at my work. I'm like, like, do you like? Hey, do you agree? Like what? Like that we're the most oppressed race? What gamers? Us gamers, we have gaming disease. Apparently, if that's do you hear about that? <laughs> Yeah, like uh, some sort of medical institution officially recognized gaming disorder as a mental disease. What does that entail? I have no clue, but this does this mean I can go on disability checks because I am a gamer? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So I don't need to work. I can just like sit around playing video games to fuel my to fuel my disorder. Yep. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> I can't wait to I can't wait for them to start marking gamer pills. Like, cure your gaming addiction by taking these gamer pills. Sponsored by GTA.com. Yeah, they think, better look like... I think my they better look like oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and I, th I think there was, like, a documentary I watched with my parents about, like, internet addiction. And there was some guy... There was some Asian kid, and he, like... I think... Yeah, and he was, uh... He, like, was addicted to video games, and he, like, he had to go to rehab or something, and it ended, I think, with him saying, Oh, I want to play more video games. <laughs> I guess rehab didn't work. Yeah. Yep. Not gaming disorder. It's it's strong. It's I almost mean, like it's not a disorder, and it's just somebody's hobby and interest. I think Ralph the movie maker made a video about like like crappy TLC movies, and there was one film uh, where it was about the kid getting addicted to porn. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. And it was just like. Like, I can I can I can kind of understand like people like around his mother's age like saying, "Oh, you like that stuff," but what about the kids at his school? I just did. Everyone at his school was bullying him for watching porn. And I'm like, what? what? Do you? I'm, I'm sorry. Do you? Does everyone live in like 1890? <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Oh yeah, but what I'm about sorry. video games? I'm trying to think what I was gonna say. Oh, I I do apologize for the two fan girls in the Twitch chat. <laughs> what was? They're was my I... friends. <clears throat> <laughs> I keep seeing that, uh, like people like just shit posting going, but those uh that video those kids going we like Fortnite we like Fortnite. Yeah, Anytime somebody talks about gamer disorder. Oh god, I, I don't know. I just don't know with them. The next generation is doomed. They really are. Like, I was I was hanging out with them. Uh, I was hanging out with them the other day, and they were just like, "Oh, I'm gonna buy some balloons and attach them to my uh, rucksack or backpack." I'm like, okay, and they were like, "No, I'm gonna buy Elsa." Like an Elsa I balloon. I remember, well, I can't really say much. I remember uh, strapping a shopping bag to my back and thinking that it would work as a parachute. It did not. I jumped off my twin bed, or my uh, double-decker bed, um, oh, to find out that, oh, shoot, gravity is way stronger than a plastic bag at Walmart. Drake, it's okay. I thought those, like, uh, web shooters were a thing. Uh... Like organic web shooters from Spider Man two thousand two. Yeah, well, I had a costume and everything. I was like, I'm, I am Spider Man. I am. It, it makes you feel like Spider Man. It really makes you feel like Spider Man. <laughs> Get me pictures of Spider Man. Coming next on IGN. Want <laughs> to watch my Joe and we make you feel like Batman? Makes you makes you feel like Batman. I'm going to commit the not alive on the oh, after no. a year. We've finally gone insane. Girls, I swear to cry. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> I feel uh, like I feel like I, I I showed you guys like like my like my pet turtles or something or like if I ever had pet turtles and then I like, just like like so, like were like crawling all over you and everything like no please, please stop please. Like snakes or something. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, I think we've run out of things to say. Yeah. Is this the end of the podcast. 
Oh, I don't know. All right. Well, Gummy was here. It, should we link her social media and all that? Yeah, yeah. We'll link her all Twitter. Right. Yeah. Also, actually, no, I'm not going to do that yet. <laughs> Stay tuned. We've got more anime to do. Uh, maybe next month. I don't know. And uh, we'll see everyone at Comic Con. Isn't that right? Oh, maybe our live E3 coverage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gamers rise up. Gamers rise up. <laughs> Gamers rise up. <laughs> this is terrible. Gaming is not a disease. So we live in a society. Well, that is the disease. <laughs> All right, I'm going to end this before we start actually doing something we regret. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye walk up to Todd Howard and like, wait, so have you got a disorder or something? Gaming disorder. Drops mic.